All right. So you might be considering making a move or investing in a home in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and I'll tell you what, that's an awesome idea because St. Pete is definitely on the rebound. And I, I hate to even say rebound, um, but it is on the climb, man. And, and St. Petersburg as a whole, the entire Tampa metro area is booming right now. We are growing. At, we're one of the fastest growing areas in the entire country. And that's for good reasons, y'all. And we're going to get into a lot of those today. But what this video is about specifically is the 10 things you need to know before making that move to St. Petersburg, Florida. Hey everyone, Juan Alcala here with the True Living Group in Tampa, Florida. And if this is your first time to the channel, we make videos all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. If this is your first time to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. And it also helps this video get out to other people who are considering making that move as well. And we're getting phone calls from people all over the country right now who are considering buying, relocating, or investing in the Tampa Bay area, in St. Petersburg specifically. Um, and, and however you got to get hold of us, you know, whether it's email, text messages, um, phone calls. Heck, I'm even getting direct messages. Uh, however, you got to get hold of us when it comes to relocating to the Tampa Bay area. We here at the True Living Group, we've got your back. So why are so many people considering making the move to St. Petersburg and the Tampa metro area? Well, St. Petersburg specifically, there is a lot of reasons and it's out, it's up and coming, y'all. And when I say up and coming, I mean, it is growing from in leaps and bounds. And just over the last year and a half, I've seen so much growth uh, in the area um, in terms of uh, new construction and, and uh, condos and apartments and uh, restaurants and bars and dining. And it was already known for that. So that's great. But you know, today I want to share with you, we're going to peel back the onion a little bit. We're going to start to see some things that you know most people don't know. So what is it that's got people considering relocating to St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, I'm going to share a lot of that with you today. I'm, I'm going to share a lot of my personal experience and I'm going to share some numbers with you guys so you can see what's going on. Um, and our top 10 is going to cover all the nitty gritty, the good stuff you need to know. Um, we're not going to get too much into the cons today because to be honest with you, there aren't many. And I'm going to make an entire video on the pros and cons because there's always cons everywhere you live. Um, but I think that the pros at this point handily outweigh uh, any cons that would hold you back from, from moving to St. Petersburg area. Area. Um, and I think that a lot of people who are coming here tend to agree. And we, we're one of the fast, uh, five fastest growing cities in the entire country right now, because um, people are just absolutely loving what, you know, Tampa Bay and St. Petersburg specifically have to offer. So I want to get into that list, starting off with number one, the cost of living. Okay. So Tampa as a whole and St. Petersburg are below the national average. And, it, you know, we've, we've done a pros and cons in the area before um, and the cost of living in the area before, too. But we are, um, you know, significantly below some major cities. And I think that that might help and give some perspective. You know, if you live in a rural area, you know, we might have a higher cost of living versus what you're used to at home. Um, but, you know, when you look at I'll give you an example, St. Petersburg, Florida has a cost of living that is 25% less than New York City. And that is a staggering number. Um, when you look at Seattle, Washington, Los Angeles, San Diego, you know, um, Portland, Oregon, the cost of living in St. Petersburg, Florida is significantly lower um, overall, you know, and that it takes into a lot of things into account. We're talking about energy costs, um, transportation, housing, um, 
you know, salaries. It, it, there's a whole mix of that. And I'll link the websites below that I use um, that you can find this information. Well, to compare it versus where you are, it'll tell you what the salaries you need to have in order to uh, live here comfortably or to match your current lifestyle. But I think what you'll find is if you're coming from any of those major metropolitan areas, which we're getting phone calls all the time from those locations specifically, that you are in for a treat because you are going to get a lot more house for your money and you're going to get a lot more living for your money as well, which is ultimately, I mean, that's a great place to be, right? Now, one of the things I want to talk about within that is housing specifically. And as you guys are aware, I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, and just in the last year alone, housing prices in St. Petersburg have gone up over 30%. That's a big number. And um, I know that there are other areas in the country that have had higher growth than that. I was just looking at uh, a friend of mine's properties over in Austin and they're up 45% year to date. So we still look like a discount compared to some of those growing areas. Um, but in Florida specifically, I mean, our cost of living here is less than Orlando. It's less than Miami. Um, and we're the fifth largest city. So it's a really good opportunity still, even though um, it is, you know, increased dramatically over the last year. But I think if you look just about anywhere in the country, you're seeing, you know, that 20 to 30% is very common. So I just wanted to share that with you. The other thing that I want you to know is rentals are hard to come by in St. Petersburg. So if you're considering making the move and renting first, you really want to be on top of that because that is not an easy thing to accomplish right now. Um, the inventories on rentals are extremely low, just like purchases are at the time of this recording. And rental rates are astronomical, y'all. This is the one thing I will say about the area that I don't love. And if we, like, like I said, if we're going to talk about some negatives, the, the cost to rent in St. Petersburg is very, very high. Um, you definitely want to take a look at those numbers. And again, are they even available for you before you're able to? before you were able to take that leap. Um, if you think you're just going to move to the area and rent, because I know what that's like. Um, when my wife and I originally tried to come down here, our intent was to be snowbirds. Uh, we're from Metro Detroit. Originally, we thought that we would live here for the winters and fly back up north and spend the summers up home. And we found out the hard way that getting a seasonal rental, um, anywhere in the Tampa Bay area is not an easy thing to accomplish. And we waited to the last minute. Um, if you're going to do that, you need to be a year in advance to get yourself in a comfortable situation, um, you know, to do it without having to be stressed out, stressed out about it is how I would say that. All right. Number two on our list is the weather. All right. Now, St. Petersburg is known as the Sunshine City. That's its nickname. I mean, and what a cool nickname. And it does. The sun shines a lot, which is awesome. And, you know, fall weather, winter weather, spring weather there. I don't know that there's any better weather in the country. Um, I've traveled quite a bit, but it doesn't make me the expert of all things. But from my personal experience, man, when it, you know, when it comes to fall here and, um, the the <laughs> mother nature flips the switch and all of a sudden humidity is gone um, it is absolutely awesome to be here so i would strongly encourage you uh, to check it out now on um, conversely the other side of that is the summers can be stifling especially if you're not used to the humidity um, i will say after three uh, summers here we've acclimatized and it doesn't really bother me yes it's hot i'm not gonna lie and tell you it's not um, no, I don't want to be standing outside working on in the lawn at one o'clock on Saturday on the, during the summer. You don't want to play that game, um, but you do get used to it. it it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, and those three months versus the nine months of joy that we get, it's totally worth it. So the weather is a huge plus here and it definitely earned its spot on this list. All right, number three on the list here is the job market in the local economy, which is thriving right now. Our entire state is seeing a huge influx from companies out of the state. Um, you know, we've got tech companies moving in from the West Coast because, hey, Florida gives you a lot of freedoms, number one. Um, you know, the cost of living is less here, so your money goes further, and the companies are aware of that too. And we've got a lot of digital nomads who have moved here over the last year as well. They didn't have to be stuck in a cold climate. They can work remote, and they, may they made a decision to make that jump. But we're having these tech companies come in, and, you know, financial institutions have been here for a long time. You know, we've got Raymond James Stadium, where the Tampa Bay Flux play in Tampa specifically. 
You know, so there's insurance companies here and financial companies here as well. And then we've also got MacDell Air Force Base that's located in South Tampa there. And that is a huge employer in the area. So that comes with some defense contracts as well. Um, and there's just a really strong economy here. And then with all the, the, um, the relocation, you know, our service industry, which Florida is known for to begin with, has had a growth spurt as well. So if, you know, if you're in the service industry, you know, getting a job at a restaurant or a bar is not difficult as of right now at the time of this recording, especially if you're experienced and, you know, Florida is still experiencing some of that COVID hangover where people, you know, don't necessarily, aren't necessarily working as much as they used to, or let me, let me rephrase that, employers don't have the accessibility to quality employees like they used to, um, you know, prior to COVID. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, you know, maybe you don't work for the tech industry or you're not a banker, or, you know, whatever it is that you might hold you back. You know, if you're in the service industry, you know, let's say you're a mixologist, you have an opportunity to come to here too, and you can find some great jobs. And hey, man, this area has it booming right now. And that leads us to number four on that list, which is dining. And St. Petersburg is definitely a foodie's delight. When it comes to the Tampa Bay area, there's not a whole lot of foodie culture. Um, and that's just my personal experience. And I know there's some great restaurants because we've experienced them. But the, the culture of uh, culinary is not, you know, around every single day in every single city in the Tampa Bay area. It's just not. Tampa's got some great restaurants. And again, there I can go through each city and point out to them. But in terms of a food culture, you know, like New York or Los Angeles or San Diego, um, you know, uh, Louisville is a great example of that, you know, and Detroit, where we're from, um, we haven't found that necessarily. Again, I don't haven't experienced everything, but from my personal experience, we haven't run across that yet, but I will tell you where we have come across it. St. Petersburg. If you go down, go down to the waterfront art district, you will find a ton of world-class restaurants, Central Avenue, First Avenue. They all have restaurants and bars all the way up and down. They are absolutely incredible. And you will find excellent cuisine. So no matter whether you want to spend six bucks on a hamburger or you want to spend $60 on a steak, I think you will find exactly what you are looking for in terms of culinary experience in St. Petersburg. And hey, I want to share with you guys one of our personal favorites. Um, my wife and I will make the 30 minute drive uh, from Indian Rocks Beach down to St. Petersburg to go to Casitas Taqueria. And y'all, if you are in the area, even if you are just visiting, stop and take the time to go to Casitas. I promise you, you will not regret it. Their shrimp tacos are unbelievable. Their barbacoa taco is awesome. And oh, when you go get the churro. This thing is soaked in honey with cinnamon on top. Oh my goodness. You will absolutely love it. All right. Number five on our list is outdoor and indoor activities. And I love this about St. Pete. If you can't find something to do in St. Petersburg, there's something broken with your exciter button because there is every single turn, every corner, there is a new experience to be had. There are murals and artwork all over the city. When I say all over the city, I mean, literally for miles down Central Avenue, First Avenue, it's everywhere. They've got local artists who will come and paint a mural on the side of local businesses. And man, they are some of the coolest pieces of artwork you will find anywhere um, in the world. As a matter of fact, I love it. And uh, there's glass art and metal art and it's everywhere. You can feel it, it, that it's alive inside the city, which I absolutely love. And when it comes to outdoor experiences, well, I mean, we're known for boating. We've got the marina. We're known for fishing. I mean, you can kayak and, and canoe and paddleboard um, and biking. There's awesome biking. You can walk anywhere in the city. Um, it's just a awesome place to come hang out. There are things happening all over the city that I know you're going to love. Which leads us to number six, events. Now, there are so many events that we could talk about, um, way more than I could even mention. <laughs> it would take an hour to get through them all. So we're not going to go that deep, but I just want to share with y'all some of the ones that, that I took note of right away. 
You know, you've got movies in the park. You've got a Saturday market in St. Pete. You've got First Fridays, which is an event where they they basically take a kind of like a restaurant row situation and they open it up and everybody, you know, hops from from restaurant to restaurant and bar to bar. Um, and that happens the, happens the first Friday of every month. Um, there was also a drone show that just took place over the bay. Now, I got to say, I didn't end up making the event, but I got to see all the photos afterwards and I I couldn't have any more FOMO than I did um, after seeing those photos because they took hundreds of drones and put lights on them and then flew them up over the bay and made um, art out of it. There was a, you know, a, a picture of a map of the United States and all of these cool things. One of them said, I love St. Pete. I mean, what a really cool event. Can you imagine sitting by the water um, overlooking Tampa Bay? And here's this beautiful light show made of drones. I mean, how cool is that, y'all? So when it comes to events in St. Petersburg, you will not be disappointed. Check out their website, find something that interests you and go check it out. You will absolutely love it. All right. Number seven, beaches. And the thing that I love about St. Petersburg is it is sandwiched right in between Tampa and the, the Gulf Coast. Um, if you are on Central Avenue, which goes from one side of Pinellas County to the other, you can drive from St. Pete, from downtown St. Petersburg over to Madeira Beach, and you can be right on the Gulf Coast. And these experiences are totally different. But what I love about all the beaches here is, you know, you've got Clearwater Beach, which is recognized as one of the best beaches in America. You've got St. Pete Beach, which is recognized as one of the best beaches in America. You're less than an hour away from uh, Siesta Key, which is recognized as one of the best beaches in America. And in Tampa specifically, um, if you just follow... Uh, um, Followed around to Pinellas County, um, which is where St. Petersburg is located, and just drive around the southern tip of uh, Pinellas County there, you're going to run into all of these beaches, St. Pete Beach, Madeira Beach, um, Indian Shores Beach, Indian Rocks Beach, where we live, uh, Clearwater Beach, Bel Air Beach. There's so many beautiful beaches. It is impossible not to find one that you like. And from downtown St. Petersburg to a beach, I mean, you're talking less than 20 minutes and it's an easy ride, y'all. And if you're feeling real froggy, you can hop on your bike, take the you know seven or eight miles over to uh, Madeira Beach and just have a nice, lazy, relaxed day. Uh, make sure you take your sun hat and your sunscreen because it could chew you up. But man, what a great, great location. So beaches are definitely a huge hit here. Number eight is sports. And um, in case you couldn't see, Champa Bay, y'all. <laughs> and that hurts. That hurts. You know, me being from uh, Michigan and, uh, you know, and uh, former Detroiter, you know, I was a Tigers fan and uh, I won't say I'm a Lions fan because they've been killing me for years, of, as you all know. Um, but it has been very cool to live here for the last three years because the Rays have been in the hunt for a World Series the entire time. Uh, the the Tampa Bay Lightning have been winning Stanley Cups, which is great. And um, last year, you know, the Bucs were able to win the Super Bowl championship under Tom Brady's reign. And listen, love them or hate them, y'all. It's a fun time to be wrapped up around sports when you're when your city's winning, because what it does is it brings more people in. Um, so there's, you know, a bump in the economy for sure. But it also just brings the city to life. It starts bringing people together. And, and as you know, over the last two years, we've needed more reasons to to be on the same page you know there's been a lot of challenges both politically and, and you know from from um from the virus that have hindered us from being able to make real genuine connections so you know the one thing that i'll say about sports regardless of whether you're into them or not is they bring people together y'all um and that is a very cool thing to have and right now tampa bay or champa bay should i say at, has it in spades you know and when you go to um st petersburg specifically you've got tropicana field where the rays play um it's literally right downtown you can walk to every single you know bar or restaurant you want from the venue there, hang out for the entire day, mosey over to the stadium. Um, you know, it's it's right there. You've got the Rowdies, which is a professional soccer club that plays. They've got their own stadium downtown. And then it just over um, the Gandhi Bridge is um, MLA Arena, which is where the Lightning play. I mean, you can literally get there within, you know, 20 minutes of downtown St. Petersburg. So how convenient and it's wonderful to have this many great sports teams. And I'd even 
even mention the fact that you've got, you know, the Philadelphia Phillies who, who do their spring training in Clearwater, and you've got the New York Yankees who do their spring training in Tampa, um, just over the Howard Franklin Bridge. And you can get there in about 30 minutes as well. So lots of sports going on in St. Petersburg. It is awesome. Okay, so number nine on our list is convenience and the accessibility to everything in the Tampa Bay area as a whole is fantastic. I mean, I just gave you guys, you know, some some very short trips um, to engage with sports just a second ago. But the thing that is really cool about St. Petersburg is the, the way it's located. You know, you've got access to major highways. Um, number one, there are um two good sized airports in the area. And, you know, the Tampa Bay airport or TPA as it's known is incredible. And I've brought this up in videos before, but it's clean, it's quick, it's designed well, it's an easy in and out. And if you travel out of there or you have traveled out of there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is so easy to walk right in the door and then be at your gate within minutes without any, you know, any stress. And it's just such a nice airport. And then if you move you know, you come across the bay and you go into Clearwater. Well, Clearwater has a regional airport um, and they're currently in the construction phase of, of building a highway that goes directly from that airport to St. Petersburg, right downtown, which is super convenient. I think that project's a little over 80 percent done. Um, it'll probably be wrapped up by spring, which is, it, which is awesome. And you can see it. It's just another way that they're making it convenient to move around the area here. And then just to the south, when you jump over the Skyway Bridge, um, which is the bridge that connects um, Pinellas County down to Bradenton um, over in the Sarasota area there as well. And it's right there and it's a beautiful bridge. It's a cool drive. They've got this beautiful fishing pier out there on both the North and the South ends that you can go hang out and catch some big old grouper out of there too. So it's a really cool spot. You definitely want to check that out when you're in the area, but it is not difficult to move around here. You can ride a bike all over the city. You can walk all over the city. There's a trolley that goes from here all the way to Tarpon Springs. That one take a little while, but it'll take you back to the beaches. No problem. Um, like I said, you could bike everywhere. There are Ubers all over the place. You can get cabs and it's just a really easy city to move around y'all. So when we talk about accessibility, that is by far a big one on the list of conveniences. All right. And number 10 is I want to just make sure that you take the time to do your homework. When you start this process of relocation, you know, a lot of the times we can get starry eyed and go, OK, you know, I've been there once. I love it. But you haven't really done the homework to find out what is best for you. Um, and I I've done this personally, you know, three and a half years ago, we made the, the trip, we relocated our entire family. And we looked at a lot of different cities in Florida before settling on the Tampa Bay area here. And what I think you'll find is St. Pete is very diverse. Um, you know, when you look at the demographics here, you're going to have young working professionals, college students, because there's colleges here. You know, you've got um, the Mayo Clinic. Um, you know, you, you've got medical here that, that's happening. Um, you got USF uh, in terms of universities. And there's a lot going on. You got St. Pete College that's downtown as well. Um, so you got a lot of young working professionals. And then there's also, you know, a large, um, you know, uh, population of retirees as well. And what I will say is there's not a ton in the middle, but it's definitely, you know, going in that direction. So, but it's very diverse and that is a positive in a lot of ways. Um, you know, so I would definitely keep that in mind. Look at St. Petersburg as a whole, because it's not small. It, I mean, it goes halfway up Pinellas County, all the way to the Southern tip. And there's a lot of different areas in there. You know, you're going to find some areas that, you know, that were down by the stadium before that, that may be a little rough around the edges and they're up and coming and that's awesome. And if you're an investor and you're looking for up and coming opportunities, those are the areas you really want to focus on because they have the biggest growth opportunities. But if you're established and you're not interested in that, then maybe for you, it's by the waterfront district, right? 
So, you know, there's a lot of condominiums over on the water district, you know, right on the bay there, which makes sense. And, you know, again, there's a lot of retirees who move here from other states and other countries, and that's where they settle in. And then you've got the Grand Central District, which is, you know, towards the west side of the city here in the west side of the highway. Um, and that's got a lot of the older, um, you know, St. Pete vibe, but it's a really cool place to go and hang out. Like I said, that's one of my favorite places to go and get tacos is down at Casitas Tacos, but that's in the Grand Central. Central district, you've got the edge district, you've got the art district, and then you've got the waterfront art district as well. So check these things out. And we're going to go through some more videos in the future where we break down neighborhoods specifically. Um, and we talk about real estate a little bit more in depth, but I just wanted to make sure that you take some time to do some homework. If you look down below, you will find um, resources that I give to my clients to help them get perspective because a majority of our clients are relocations or they're, you know, maybe it's a second home or an investment property because of where we live um, in the country here. And, you know, when it comes to moving to Tampa, Florida, however you got to get hold of us, whether it's, you know, uh, text message, direct message on Instagram, you know, email, call, how, whatever that is that makes you comfortable, please feel free to reach out because me and my team here at the True Living Group would love to help you make that move. So any questions or comments you guys have, please drop them below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a new video just like this. And, and until next time, go out and live that St. Pete life.